I think 90% of his wins were knockouts. I never had a fight where I thought, you know what, I'm going to win on points. How long is one of the, the top lads come from the UK? I know Portuguese. I've had about 75 fights. I've been very lucky to fight all over the world. Two ISK world titles, WBC. Hadouken! I moved over to England when I was 15 years old. And my parents obviously stayed back in Portugal. I was basically more or less living by myself. I'd left relatives in here, but I was living by myself. I ended up mixing up with the wrong crowd. But I had the job, and this lad, a good mate of mine called Clive, asked me if I could, if I wanted to go to the gym, to this Thai boxing thing. I didn't know what it was, and I thought, well, why not? Let's, let me let, let me have a go with it, see if I like it. I did go, I went over. I was absolutely rubbish at it. You know what I mean? I was one of them skinny, cocky kids that thinks in the world, but I was absolutely terrible. But I loved it. I really liked it. And I like the, the, the family unit and the sort of, the, you know, the, the, the love that I got from other people and like John and stuff, and he gave me that thing. And I remember like me and John used to go to Birmingham to go and see the Tower of Ballroom shows. And that, I absolutely loved it. And obviously I, I liked what the fighters were doing in there and I wanted to be that person. And obviously then we decided to fight and that's how it started for me really, the love started for me from that and that did change my life. The Tower Ballroom events were some of the biggest Muay Thai Thai boxing events in the UK at that time. Any of the big names fought on there from obviously uh, the past guys to people that are at the top now kind of started there. It's almost like the starting ground for a lot of people. I remember you know, Paolo and obviously uh, John and everyone coming up with like coach loads of people just to watch the show let alone if they had people fighting on it. So it used to draw like a, a lot of interest from all around the country. We didn't have anything, mate. We used to train lie on a concrete floor in a little church hall. We had one bag up. It used to be freezing in the winter. And uh, yeah, we didn't have any we didn't have anything but you know we, we were full of passion. I, I remember well like you know back then we not even really like had interclubs, the amateurs in the stuff. So I remember having my first fight, no shin guards. I was about 49 kilos and I was fighting a bloke called Scott New Newton from um, Nottingham. He was about, like, I don't know, probably about 50, 56, good 57 kilos, so it was a bit of a big difference. And I remember like being nervous as hell, but because I never done it, I didn't really knew how to cope with the nerves. And again, I didn't have the experience. He's only really come into his own, I think, the older he's got, because he's mature mind, you know, he's where he started coaching as well as a fighter, and you learn a lot by coaching, teaching people, everything sinks in a little bit more. You're almost a little bit more relaxed about it. I mean, you train 110%, but you're not in a rush anymore. You know, you realise it's no good doing it too quick if it's not right. Paolo is, is one of the, the top lads from here, obviously to come from the UK. I know he's Portuguese, but like to come out of the UK. Like, it's, it's just not part of what people obviously refer to as the clique. So like there's a group of people that think this is Muay Thai, this is how it should be, this is how it should be done, that's not real Muay Thai, and kind of disregard that kind of aspect. And I suppose with Paolo, he doesn't have what you'd class as a traditional Muay Thai style. So I think that's why he kind of sometimes is not really looked at as highly or he's not taken as seriously as some other people because of that style. But his style has got one of the best knockout ratios in the country. I've done well, I've had, I've had about 75 fights. I've been very lucky to fight all over the world, you know what I mean? I've been to fight Vegas, LA, China, Japan, you know, all over Europe, I've had lots of fights. I've been lucky enough to win good titles. I've, I've got well, two ISK world titles, WBC, and some other big organizations, not to name them all, but yeah, I, you know, I, I've done good. I, I won like solid world titles against solid, solid opposition. Sometimes doesn't happen all the time now, so. I've had two of the most memorable things. One was the first time I fought in Portugal, because obviously I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Portuguese, so. And it was the first time my parents ever saw me, saw me fight. So for me, that was really memorable. And obviously, the, the person I was fighting, we didn't really get on. The guy was uh, being bad mouth in Paolo, funny enough, in Portuguese for ages saying he's not this, he's not that. So he kept calm on the night and uh, all Paolo's, you know, village had travelled there. And uh, yeah, it was a must have been brilliant for him, to be honest. Must be proud to watch his son. First time he lost him fighting for us. To be a knockout. Uh, his name was, was Rui Garcia and he was based in Lisbon. I fought everyone, like, I fought Del White when Del White was in his prime. Del White is undefeated, Dale, um, one of the, the very best. 
to come back from the UK. Yeah, he fought Dale for WBC. Yeah, no, that didn't go too well, but, but he, was, he wasn't 100. percent But Dale, Dale was something else at the time. To be fair, you know, he was very experienced, lovely tie style. You know, good knee, good knees. Good long teeth, you know, all, all the stuff that Paolo didn't like at the time was perfect. <laughs> to be fair, but uh, Paolo had an accident, a car accident like that week, unfortunately, so it was like, you know, but uh, he wasn't 100%, but to be fair, I think that probably would have been the same result. Dale, Dale, Dale was, a, was a great fighter. So for people like that, I fought um, Rhys Crook back in the day, you know, top, top fighter. His, his brother, Peter Crook, was an amazing fighter. Reese was a top lad. I was out for a bit to come back. He become number one. He's won a WBC uh, international title, I think. He's won a Commonwealth. He's won a European. So like, he was a good lad, good pedigree coming from obviously Peter Crook and Tony Myers and from the Trojan camp. Again, very experienced. They had two fights. So Paolo won the first fight and Reese won the second. But both good fights. Who else did I fight? Romeo Danza. Romeo's like one of the top guys in America. Been around for years. Beat some like top names himself. We fought, we fought about four times. I think the first time they gave him the win. I thought that, I thought I won that fight to be honest. But they gave him the win, so it was cool. We fought again in Vegas, and then I won by KO. And then after that, I think he beat me twice on points after that. But yeah, we always had good scraps. It was a clash. We were both similar styles, so we both just stood there and just had the slugfest as such. It wasn't the most technical fights, but it was a proper proper brawl. And then in, in Japan, I fought Tomonori. Good fighter, legend, Japanese legend. Yeah. So what, what a trip. I mean, we always wish, I don't know if he told you, but we always wanted to go to Japan. I don't know why we love Japan. It's like the land of the samurai, and, you know, whatever. And uh, we never, I said, why haven't we been offered a fight in Japan? 20 years. Never been offered. There must be loads of little guys there. <laughs> and then the year he's going to retire, we got offered, we got offered Tomonori. Couldn't believe it. And then he won by a knockout, world title. So like, what a dream. If you're going to plan your retirement year, <laughs> you know, if Carlsberg did retirement years, that would have been it. Unreal. Oh, yeah, great, great ending to, the, to his legacy. Really. I actually fought him in 2004. Um, I felt I won the fight, but they gave it to him. But again, he's a top, top Japanese guy, and Paolo put him away twice. He, he knew in, Feb in January he was retiring that year. So it was like, right, let's get everything in we can this year. We have our last fight on our show in November. And the Japanese fight come out of bed, you know, thanks Paul Hennessy and Toshi Nakasan for, for sorting that one out. But, um, yeah, that was like a dream come true for us just to go, and then he, and he won it. So I'm not like um, what you call a, I suppose a pretty Muay Thai fighter. You know, the lovely kicker, the good mover. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a heavy eater. I, I'm, I, I never had a fight where I thought, you know, what, I'm going to win on points or I look for points. I've always been for for the KO. It's been my greatest thing and it's been my greatest downfall. Yeah. But everyone's, you've got to box your strengths, you know, I mean, we always try to get him kicking more, you know, the score, we understand in the score, and you've got to kick Paolo, you know, but really, he, he won, he won like, I think 90% of his wins were knockouts. Like, if he was a middleweight, he'd be really well famous from just being like, you know, if he, he lost most of the fights that went to points, won a few on points, but generally he knocked them out. He, he had hand, his hands, he hit so much harder than his, than his size, much, much harder, so it's just the speed, and, and he throws at that left hook naturally. No. Like I say, if he was a middleweight, he'd be, would have been in Hollywood. <laughs> you know, 10, 15 years ago, I'm sure he'd be making kung fu films. You know? Yeah, we junk club on that, probably, isn't <laughs> Probably, <it>? yeah. <laughs> I'd say about eight years ago, me and John sat down and we decided to go basically full time, give up the day jobs, you know, and just, and just go full time with the gym. Almost nine years down, down the line, we, you know, we, you know, we're living the dream, really. Paolo's had one of the most successful careers in UK Muay Thai. I think his knockout ratio is something like 80%, or it might even be higher than that, because there's only a couple of times I've known him to go the distance. John as well, John has got one of the most successful gyms in the country. He doesn't go around boasting, just again, as we spoke earlier, he's focusing on himself. His students are doing well, his gym's doing well, his promotions are doing well. So to, I, I, I've spoken to John a couple of times, and I've just kind of said how much I respect him and how I admire them for how, where they've come from and where they've got to now. Very proud of him. But I, you know, I love all the guys that fight for me. They don't fight within the first year, so you're always building relationships with all of them. But, uh, uh, someone like Paolo, uh, you know, it's, it's been a journey, isn't it, 20 years? So, yeah. Long time, isn't it? Yeah, long definitely. You, ma you made me realise that you can achieve anything in life that you really want to. As long as you work hard at something, you can become, you know, anything you want, really.